Hello, it's Keith here and this is lesson 7 of the simple series of my 68000 programming tutorials. Today we're going to be looking at the Sharp X68000 and we're going to learn how to read in the joystick. In this example we'll learn how to read in the MSX type joystick, the 2 fire button up down left right type, because we can also use a 6 button Sega Genesis joypad but we're not going to look at that today. Okay, well let's go over the, to the code and let's see today's example in action. So this is the example today. Uh, this is effectively the same as the smiley example before, but now we're going to be able to control the smiley. And here's the smiley, and I'm using cursor keys, but that's just because my emulator is using the cursors as a joystick. So this is joystick control we're reading, and you can see we've got range checking so we can't go off the screen. Okay, let's go over the code today and let's see what it takes to make this work. So first of all, we've got our screen initialization for the graphics mode here. We're not using sprites, it's just the same software sprites as before. We're defining the colors here, and then we're setting up the position of our player. Now, if we go to the bottom of the code here, we've got two words for the current player position and two words for the last player position, the, the last valid player position. We've also got the smiley sprite and a new blank sprite, which will clear the old sprite off the screen. Get screen pause is our memory calculation, and blank player and draw player are modified versions of the sprite routine that we had before. Now, the one's using the smiley bitmap, and the other's using the blank one, and these are used to draw our smiley to the screen and take it away. Okay, so what about reading in from the joystick? Well, first iteration of this loop, we're gonna skip over the joystick reading, and that's because we've got an infinite loop until a key is pressed, and so we need to show the starting position of the player here. So that's what we're doing here, we're just skipping over the first time, but from then on, we're gonna read in the joystick. Now first we need to select the joystick and the keys we're reading in. So we do this with port E9A005 here and writing zero to that will select the defaults for joystick one. We would have other options for reading in joystick two and also reading in the extra controls. Please take a look at um, my platform specific series. We went into more detail on this, but this is a simple series. We just do the basics here. Okay, so we select the port with that and then we read in the joystick from E9A001 here and that will give us the four directions and two fire buttons and we're loading that into D3 here and we're going to loop here until a direction is pressed. Now once we've got a direction to process, we're backing up the current player position here and then we are going to clear the old player position off the screen. Next what we're doing is we're testing each of the bits of the directions and we're moving the player position accordingly. Then we store the new player position back into the variables here. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check if the player has gone off the screen. Now the top coordinate of the screen is zero comma zero, and so we don't actually need to check for going over the bottom or top boundaries of the screen. The reason for that is if you go below zero, you'll wrap around and in this case to 65535. So we only need to check the top boundaries to check effectively both. That's what we're doing here. We're checking the two boundaries here, and if the player's position is okay, we'll end up here. If the player's position is invalid, we will end up here, and this is restoring the old player position back to the current player position, and that will reset the player back onto the valid position in the screen. Finally, what we do, we draw the player back on the screen, and then we've got a delay loop here just to slow things down a little bit, and that's all there is to it. As I say, basically the joystick reading itself is just a combination of this initialization and then this read here. So there we go. That's all we need to do to get this working. Now, we're gonna see a later version of this code in a series later on, which is the YQuest series. YQuest is a game I originally wrote for the Z80 and then made for the 6502 and 68000, and it's based on the simple series, based on this code. So you'll see later on that this can be extended out into something resembling a full-blown game. So um, please stick around for that. But of course, you can get today's example code from the website and of the build scripts as well. So if you wanna have a go with it and make something from it, then great, I'm sure you can. That's all we're gonna be covering today though. So if you've liked what you've seen, please like and subscribe. If you like the videos, YouTube is more likely to recommend them. And if you subscribe, it improves my motivation to make more. So please consider doing that. Anyway, I wish you all the best with your 68000 assembly and I hope you enjoy the Sharp X68000. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.